Good morning, good morning. I've got my, it's actually tea, but we're ready for coffee and conversation. So we'll wait a few minutes to let some people join. There we go. I am super excited for you all to hear from our speaker today, our, our guest on Coffee on Conversation. I'm trying to figure out how to, there we go. Give us a second to get her connected. Maybe, there she is. I'm here. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good morning. Good morning, I, I'm good. I am got my tea, I'm ready for the day. It's super exciting. So I'm really excited for everyone to, to meet you. Everyone, this is Dakota Durstein. She is Miss Santa Fe Trail and an advocate for conservation, wildlife, um, the earth in general. I'm really excited for you to get to meet her. And so um, while we go about our little conversation today, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the little comment box, whatever. Oh, I was going to have them follow you. Follow yeah, give me a follow Dakota. At... Okay, let's see if I can figure out how to pin this comment. We'll figure out so sometimes I remember and sometimes I forget until the last five seconds and then I'm like, oh, I'm awful. Okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no, that is so we're we're super excited. Also, part of why we're interviewing today, I'm going to let you introduce yourself in a second so everyone could get the, the full effect of who Dakota is. Um, but today is World Wildlife Day. It was instituted by the United Nations um, as a way to celebrate and make sure we're still doing our part to take care of the planet we all share. Um, so today, I'm super excited to to chat with you, Dakota. So could you kind of introduce yourself to everyone and tell us a little bit about what you're about? Of course. So as um, Sierra said, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, I've been fighting a cough. Um, my name is Dakota Durstein. I am Miss Santa Fe Trail uh, through the Miss Kansas organization. I've been in there uh, for about seven years now. And I've had so many different platforms and so many different social impact statements. Excuse me. <coughs> That's never fun. But human bodies, we've got to love them. Um, but uh, I was in a local once, and they asked me about turtles, and I went off about sea turtles and why, you know, we need to protect our oceans, even though we're in Kansas, because it matters. And they said, why are you not talking about animals all the time? And a light went off, and I was like, why aren't I? I should be. Somebody needs to be, because nobody was at the time. And so animals are my passion. That's the field of study that I went into. That's what I want to do after all this. And so I'm just here to try to save our planet. I love that. I love that so much. You actually got to do a really cool internship <laughs> this, um, what was it? Was it a year ago, a year and a half ago? Um, um, tell us about that. Yeah, it was, so I left about a year and a half ago um, because uh, I actually, March is when I came back to Kansas. So I know that our chat this morning is coffee and conversation. I'm not a huge coffee drinker. And I also just went to the dentist. So I was like, okay, don't drink coffee. So I have water. That's good. So, um, <laughs> I have my water. And you guys can tell like the first step that I tried to take when I got serious about this was not using plastic as much. So even though that's like a super basic thing that we were taught when we were young, like reduce, reuse, and recycle, it's still so prominent today. And so I try to diminish my plastic usage by using a refillable, washable water bottle. And you can see on here, it says Wildlife Safari in Winston, Oregon, with a lovely cheetah and all my uh, Oregon stickers. But that's where I went for my internship. And they are a safari park, so it's a drive through style zoo. And it's amazing. I, I could talk about them all day long, but so a little bit about wildlife safari. Um, they have all sorts of animals, uh, herbivores, carnivores, they got birds, they got all the cool stuff. Um, but they are the number one cheetah breeding facility 
in the United States. They are oh, second wow. in the world. Wow. And the top in the world is a reserve in Africa. So obviously, you know, where we want the cheetahs to be. But it's just really amazing that they've had such, you know, great breeding um, with their animals. And so cheetahs from all over may have come from Oregon. <laughs> That's so cool. So it's pretty amazing. Um, but I got to help a lot with that. Um, I actually got to help with part of the breeding process. We obviously let them do it on their own. Um, you know, they'll figure it out. Right. But, um, <laughs> but they always have someone watching just in case, you know, something goes wrong or just to confirm that there was a successful breeding. And I actually had the honor of standing guard, I guess. Um, and I watched two cheetahs breed. And then after I left, it was confirmed that she was pregnant and she had a litter of cubs like two months after. So it was pretty amazing to feel like, like I helped with that in some way. <laughs> right. That's awesome. So what is your, what is your, this is probably going to be a hard question to answer. No, that's okay. Let's do it. You mentioned turtles. You mentioned cheetahs. Oh. You tagged some whales in our uh, Instagram promotion of this story. Cute. What is your favorite animal to either work with or like, work towards protecting okay yeah no that's actually a really good question I thought you were gonna ask my favorite animal and well that's that nest <laughs> that's a super hard question all the time and I feel like that changes throughout our lives um definitely to work with I would say probably cheetahs or bears hmm. bears which I know we're always taught like they're not cuddly and adorable they're dangerous but at the same time, they're still cuddly and adorable. <laughs> and sometimes they just like to roll around and be silly. They all have personalities. And that's what is so amazing to see. And I wish everybody was able to see that. But working, working with definitely those two, um, one that I'm very passionate about working towards is the Sumatran tiger. Mm. So that was another animal that I actually had the opportunity to work with at Oregon. So Oregon has influenced me tremendously. Um, but Sumatran tigers are the smallest, uh, subspecies of tiger, and they also have one of the smallest populations. So, in the wild, several hundred is all mm. that's left. Um, and tigers are very hard to breed for. So, uh, it's just one of those things, you know, Sumatra is an island all on its own. And so when you get any type of isolation in a habitat, it creates conflict for animals. It obviously in an island, they can't leave there without any help. So then you get, you know, a lot of people going there to hunt or you start to get inbreeding because all the animals are related. So just a very sad situation. Um, but through conservation efforts, we can help with things like that. And so I've been telling everyone we're having coffee and conversation all about conservation. So I love there, that. There are so many different ways that people can help. And it's not just, you know, you can go to a zoo, you can donate money, but it's also as easy as, you know, taking care of what you do, talking about it, just inspiring it in someone else. Spreading the word is, is half of what we need. I love that. Awareness is so important. And you mentioned going to the zoo. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Sedgwick County Zoo. Um, it's it's like apparently like a top rated zoo in this like region. And I love it. Uh, for those of you who are just watching and aren't familiar with Sedgwick County, um, it's where my hometown is. I'm from El Dorado and Wichita. So it's like 15 minutes away from my house. Um, and it's a absolutely beautiful zoo. Um, but we just had a really exciting surprise happen at the zoo earlier this week. Do you know about the surprise? I do, but I want you to announce it because I, I can tell you're excited. Yes, I am so excited. It's so cute. And um, so we had two black rhinos. Okay, I'm going to do this in the non-scientific way because I, I don't know all of the different types of rhinos. But I know really cool. that we had two black rhinos, one male and one female. And the male recently passed away which was super sad because they're super endangered and there's not a lot of them left, let alone pairs of male and female to reproduce. But fortunately, before his name was Clyde, before Clyde passed away, um, 
the the female rhino who I completely forgot her name, uh, she was able to get pregnant and she just had a baby like on Sunday. Um, so there is this cute little wobbly rhino. Its feet are massive and its legs are so small. And I've just been like keeping up. My friend runs the uh, Instagram for the Cedric County Zoo. And so I'm just like looking at all the pictures and like, I never love a, knew I could love a rhino so much. It's so cute. Yes, it's amazing. And so, yeah, it's, it's that easy. It's that easy just sharing, you know, the Instagram posts, asking questions. But yes, I saw that too. And I freaked out. And I was like, oh my gosh, guys, a baby. Babies a are baby always rhino. cute in the animal kingdom, no matter what it is. I, 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 I would completely agree with that. I mean, they're just precious. <laughs> yes. Um, so, oh, go ahead. No, please. No, you're good. Oh, I was just going to ask, uh, you, t you teased with answering what your favorite animal is. So now I have to ask, oh, what's your favorite animal so, <laughs> right now? <laughs> right. So right now it changes, obviously. Um, so right now it's jumped back to sea turtles. Um, okay. Not like anyone in particular, but like log, there are loggerhead sea turtles. There are leatherback sea turtles. I love them all. I think they're precious. And I think that that happened because I'm always watching like our planet or, um, what is it like night on earth, all the animal shows that pop up on, you know, TV, Hulu, Netflix, all those. And I watched another one last night and it showed the baby sea turtles trying to crawl to the beach and it got to my heart and I was like, okay, I'm going to Florida and we're going to save some baby sea turtles. Oh, I um, love that. So yeah, right now it jumped back to the sea turtles actually. So I have no shame in being from Kansas and loving marine animals. I was just about to ask about that. So you mentioned in the beginning that you were talking about sea turtles and how passionate you were for conservation efforts just worldwide, but also like oceanic and marine conservation. So how, how do you describe to people who maybe who have never left Kansas before how important it is to save our oceans? Absolutely. So there is always going to be a trickling effect. And I actually learned this in college um, during a conservation class. So I graduated from Jorge State University. Go Tigers. Uh, go Tigers. See? Love yeah, that. <laughs> all the time. Um, but I actually learned in a conservation class that there is a trickling effect. Whether we see it or not, it is happening. And so an easier way for Kansans to think about it is let's think about the wind. We know that we have a lot of that, even if we don't always have water. So if you throw out a dollar. We'll say a dollar because that seems more important than a piece of paper. A hundred dollar bill. Where's it going to end up? The wind's going to carry it away. Depending on which direction the wind's going, it could end up in Nebraska. It could get caught on a tree and somebody else could find it. The wind could just sweep it away up higher into the atmosphere and then it'll drop back down later because of atmospheric pressure. So you don't know where it's going to go. So if we think about, if we do have a nice little stream, we know we don't have large rivers, but those systems are all connected. And so it's gonna find its way to something bigger. And the other thing about animals and the world is that it is gonna be carried away by different things. You know, the wind could pick it up, it could fall into a stream, a bird could pick it up and make it part of its nest and then the wind takes it again. There's so many different possibilities, but it's gonna end up somewhere that it's not supposed to be. So that's why to me, you know, even just reducing plastic and straw usage was so huge, was because it's gonna end up somewhere, not where it's supposed to be, and it could really hurt something. And yeah, there's always the beauty when, you know, we see a piece of fabric or a piece of paper that's in a bird's nest and you're like but wait it found it found a way to work in in the world but you know if you guys haven't seen the videos with like sea turtles um with straws in their nose or plastic bags in the water that mimics a jellyfish which is one of their main food sources and so it's super dangerous for them and so I just, yeah, just think of that. Think of the different possibilities of how it could get there and 
then you, you know, we never know. We think out of sight, out of mind, but I want to steer away from that. I want it to always be in our minds. I think that's so, so wise is thinking about like, there's a world outside of Kansas that needs to be cared for. There's also a world inside of Kansas that needs to be cared for, but sometimes it's, it's hard, especially if you've never traveled and especially for the young ones who travel isn't really a thing right now. Um, going to see the beach isn't really a thing right now. And so getting some of those um, field trip style learning experiences about nature, it's, it's a little hard. So it can be hard to frame that reference of, I can do things to help something that doesn't necessarily affect me right now, but it does help a fish at the end of the line. Um, no pun intended, but like there, there are things that we can do. So what is, um, you mentioned non-plastic use you mentioned straw cutting straws um what is another actionable step that someone maybe a high schooler could take right now if they're interested in what you're talking about and saying I want to make a difference yeah of course so if you know and I know it's hard to like if your parents already buy plastic water bottles and you want a water you're like what am I supposed to do so you know obviously you can ask to start recycling And, you know, sometimes parents are like, ugh, it's just another trash can. That's okay, I get that too. Um, But collect what you can and take it. And I know that sometimes that feels like community service, but that's not a bad thing. We're in an organization that thrives off of community service. Um, If you're in high school, community service looks great on scholarship forms. It looks great on resumes no matter what your age is. So, I mean, really take that. Um, but also volunteer. So if you are interested in this and you don't want to do, you know, pick up litter because it feels like community service and feels like a punishment, um, go somewhere local. Go to an animal shelter. That's also a huge help. Um, Go to uh, your state. You know, ours is Kansas. So Kansas Department of Wildlife Parks. Ask if there's anything you can do to help. If you have a local zoo, even if it's a small one, go in and say, hey, I know that I'm this age and I probably can't train anything and do super fun things, but can I help you pick up trash? Can I help scoop up poop? I know that's not fun either, but you get kind of close to the animals, so that's cool. Um, But those people will talk to you and they'll see that you care in some way and there's always a reward to it. There really is. That's good advice. That's super good advice. Volunteerism, community service, does look good on resumes. It does help you with scholarship applications and different organizations like the Miss America organization that we're a part of. But it also helps you feel good, even if you're scooping poop. Like it, it benefits someone or something down the line and it it does help you on the inside grow and develop too. So that's Sometimes good advice. I like it. day of work, you just feel so good. Or maybe that's me and I'm crazy. But sometimes manual labor just helps you fall asleep better at night. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because you're exhausted, but at least it helps. I I completely agree. I love that. So we talked about outside of Kansas, and we touched a little bit about inside of Kansas. Um, Conservation, I know, so I'm from Butler County, and we host, um, usually every year we host like a governor's one-shot turkey hunt where conservationists come together. They do go out and hunt turkeys, but they do it in a way that is sustainable for the environment and all of the funds raised or a large portion of the funds raised goes toward conservation efforts. So how how can people um, think about conserving Kansas lands and conserving Kansas water? Like what tips do you have or just knowledge that you'd like to share about that? Yeah, so that's a great point, actually. And I I would love to talk on that more. So I'm glad you brought that up. Um, So a lot of people... uh, kind of come with the stigma of, well, you work in a zoo, so you must be against hunting. Not necessarily. So hunting in conservational means, and like you said, in a well-managed way, is good for the environment. Um, You know, invasive species are a problem, but also too large of a population in one area is a problem. That's why we do have, you know, different bird hunting seasons, We have deer seasons, um, and the Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks does a great way of, you know, gauging that and doing some surveys and realizing, okay, we have some higher numbers this year. We can allow for a few more hunters. 
to purchase tags to legally try to get a deer. The other thing that we have to remember is hunting is not always that easy. You know, I'm, I'm a hunter, uh, and I did not get a deer this year. They evaded me. They were too smart for me. Um, <laughs> and that's okay. And I also love that. Um, but it is a challenging um, recreation or sport or hobby, however you consider it. Um, but as long as you're doing it within the means of your state or county regulation, uh, it is healthy for, for the population to do that. Um, it's just like as if we had wolves being predators still. Think about it that way. And if you're not wasting that meat, um, then it's not a bad thing. If you're just in it for the trophy, that's okay. But you can then donate that meat back to the Department of Wildlife, and they will find a needy family who can use it. So that's also a fun fact that I learned about um, this past year, uh, is that people who don't want the meat, they're not into that, uh, you can give that back, and they'll find somebody who needs it. And I love that's that. That's really cool. I didn't know that. That's yeah. That's really that's exciting. I yeah. love that. Um, Absolutely. And also, Kansas is a huge agricultural state. We know that. I'm from a farming, you know, background. So there's so many things that I have to think about when I talk about animals and conservation. Um, but even, you know, having irrigation systems or having a pond on some part of your property is helpful to our environment. That's a whole small ecosystem all in itself. And then you get birds who fish from it. You get people who fish from it. There are so many different ways. And it doesn't have to be anything super hard. Maintaining a pond, keeping it clean, keeping it stocked with fish, all of those things help. That's great. So you have a farming background. Yes. And so I'm assuming that you've been around animals probably your whole life. Oh, yeah. Okay. So what is it do you think that led you to this career and this passion? Was it like farm life? Was it some like some event that happened that you were like, light bulb, this is my moment? Or what? How did you get where you are? You know what? That's actually a great question. I don't think I've ever really questioned it. Like I've always like animals have always just been there. Um, I grew up with pets. I had a dog when I was a year old. Um, we always had animals running around. My mom always had animals running around. And so, I mean, I think it's, it's one of those things that is, uh, kind of starts with human nature, whether it's your domesticated pets or your domesticated farm animals. Um, because even if it's a livelihood, you chose that and you don't, you don't just do that. You know, if any farmers are watching this, I hope, I hope you're watching. Um, but we know that it's hard. You know, but it comes with a lot of benefits and it comes with a lot of satisfaction at the end of the day that we talked about. And, you know, you're a caretaker. We are made to be caretakers of the earth, um, is my, my belief. And so it's just one of those innate things that we feel to take care of something that seems helpless or is helpless and just needs a little bit of love. And I think that that's probably where it was. It was pets, it was farming, and I took that and I just ran with it. And I've always wanted to adopt every little thing that came across us. If like one time there was a cat outside my window and I heard it crying. And so we went outside and we found this cute little kitten and then we found it a home. You know, we don't, I don't turn away from animals like that um, or any of them. You know, kittens are cute and cuddly, and, and there are animals that people shy away from, and I understand, too. I don't love all of the animals, but they are equals, and that's what's big to me. Um, I originally wanted to go into veterinary school or uh, marine biology, actually. Uh, if you go through, like, all my old yearbooks, and it was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I'm going to move to the ocean, and I'm going to be a dolphin trainer. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to save all these little, the whales and the sea turtles. And so it's funny because I'm from Kansas, but that's all. I love that you said you were moving to the ocean, like not California, <laughs> not Florida, not like the Galapagos Islands, like the ocean is the ocean. your address. I'm going to live on a boat, <laughs> international love waters, it. 24-7. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, um, 
No, I think I'm going to have to dig deep for that because I can't, like, pinpoint a specific instance, but now I'm going to have to go back in my memories and see if I can figure it out. I love that. Please keep me updated because I'm I very will. curious. Yeah. What, what is, so maybe someone's listening and they're like, man, this sounds really cool to me. What kind of um, academic advice, like what would you say someone should maybe, maybe pursue uh, different extracurricular activities that were super helpful to you or um, a certain class or a program? Can you kind of speak on that a little bit? Yeah, of course. So no matter if you're in, you know, high school, college, uh, like I said, volunteering is a great way. So animal shelters, I did that in college. I helped walk dogs. It was that easy. I got to go play with dogs sometimes. Um, in high school, I don't think there was any real specific course that I was able to take. Um, I did take the high school ag class where we did get to work with some animals a little bit because it was in the spring. Um, so we had some school farm animals. So some cute little baby goats, some little baby cows. Uh, so that's always a good one if you like kind of want to test the waters. Like I said, though, everything's cute when it's a baby. So just remember that. <laughs> when they're bigger sometimes animals can get scary <laughs> but um college uh, if you're looking to going into something like this a biology degree of some sort is great um not all places require a four-year university sometimes you can you know get an associates and places are okay with that too every place is different so if you want to end up at one particular facility or in one particular town or state, look into what those zoos or park reserves, whatever you're interested in doing, what they ask of. Everyone's different. Uh, some places will take you uh, with a psychology degree because, you know, the animals can't communicate back to us in a way we understand. So learning some of that in psychology and how the brain works really helps as well. Uh, mm. Yeah, my uh, degree isn't even like an animal science biology. It's just general bio. So I learned about the human body and anatomy and potentially going into med school kind of classes. And then I learned about conservation and zoology courses and evolution and all of those are important as well. So there's a wide variety of classes that you can take. And it doesn't have to be, you know, super medical classes. Uh, I went, when I went to Fort Hayes, I was in a lot of classes with people who wanted to be, um, you know, like rangers or uh, work for the Kansas Department of Wildlife. And some of them just even wanted to like survey ground. Like, so it doesn't have to be animals either. It can be trees you can be a botanist you can you know look at flowers and figure out if there's connections through that um because that's the beauty of the ecosystem it's like a human body everything is connected in some way one thing could help or hurt another thing if you take it out of the environment so it's it's super interesting to learn we always need more scientists always I love that. What a great, like, gym. I love that so much. Um, so we're going to get started to wrapping up. So if anyone's in the audience and you had questions throughout this that you really want answered, feel free to drop them in the in the comment section. And also, I've got Dakota's uh, Instagram handle pinned. So be sure to give give her a follow. Not right now, because it'll close you out of the live. But as soon as we're done, l l go follow her. Um, you, you mentioned something in there that I thought was really good, not just for people interested in conservation or in like animal science. You said, look up um, the job that you want and then kind of go backwards for what they require. I think that's super good um, advice just for anyone in any, in any field. Like think about your dream job and then figure out what it takes to get into that dream job. I think that that's a that's good, really good advice for anyone. So I love and, that you shared that. Yeah, it's so funny because uh, for those of you who don't know, we just had our Miss Kansas workshop, and that's what they said. They were like, when you want a job, it's a job. And just because Miss Kansas is a different kind of job, and it's all based on service, doesn't mean that there aren't requirements and things that we need to try to stay on top of, too. 
So it, it really, it's, it's full circle. But yeah, I love just preparing people for the world and for their dreams because you're the only person who can go out there and crush your dream and get what you want, you know? I love that. So inspirational. That was great. Um, speaking of Miss Kansas, this is an absolute shameless plug. Um, Dakota and I are sister queens within our Miss Southwest organization. She's Miss Santa Fe Trail. I'm Miss Southwest. And we've gotten incredible scholarships through the Miss Kansas organization, Miss Kansas organization. How much, can I ask you how much uh, scholarships you've gotten over your time? Yeah, of course. So it's a rough estimate. I have it all written down because I do like to keep track. Um, but I've gotten approximately $10,000 paid for over my seven years of competition. That's incredible. That's absolutely outstanding. <laughs> it's a blessing, guys. This organization is a blessing. Um, it absolutely. reminds the women in it to stay, you know, goal-oriented and stay focused. And there are so many networking opportunities to where we can continue to you know, meet people who are going to help get us further and further and further in life, no matter what our job is. And it's, it's wonderful. It keeps us on top of being part of a community and uh, just meeting wonderful people who want to help you every step of the way. Absolutely. And it helps academically, obviously, with scholarships. Dakota has won almost 10, over $10,000 in scholarship, over $10,000. That's absolutely incredible. I myself have been able to win almost $8,000. So I love it. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have been able to go to college without the benefit of the Miss Kansas organization scholarships. So if you are sitting here and you're like, I really want to go into conservation science or animal science or something, don't know how I'll pay for it. Consider the Miss America organization, absolute shameless plug. Um, because there's so many opportunities you don't even have to win a title to win scholarship dollars and I think that's the coolest part um like Dakota you won talent at our local competition and that came with a scholarship right you did you you won talent I won talent but you yes won something else didn't you? I don't remember I think you I don't did. Know. It's been two years. <laughs> Amanda yeah. Amanda's in here we'll ask we'll ask Amanda Amanda's I saw watching. her yeah <laughs> Um, Amanda's our local director, so she's in charge of uh, putting together the local pageant um, in Ulysses, so shout out to her if she's still watching. And um, she just had a baby, a beautiful little baby named Navy. Another another young girl that we can get into this wonderful organization. Absolutely, give her 17 years. <laughs> 17 years. Um, so yeah, like Sierra said, if any of you guys are interested, oh, Savannah said love you. We love you too, Savannah. Uh, Savannah was one of our previous sisters. She has also been in the Miss uh, Kansas and Miss America organization. She's wonderful. Um, but I was going to say, if anyone's interested in that, feel free to reach out to me um, or Sierra. You guys have our Instagram handles right here. Uh, and if you never know, just ask somebody. Somebody always knows somebody who can get you in contact with one of us or somebody else. Maybe a local director is in your town and you don't even know it. Absolutely. So without further ado, go follow Dakota on her Instagram right down there. It's pinned. And is there any final thoughts that you'd like to share? Maybe I didn't ask you a question that you're like burning to share or you thought of something halfway through. What what final wisdom would you like to impart on our audience today, Dakota? Wow. I have so much. Like, I, I always have so many things to say. Um, we had some great conversation about animals and conservation. Um, and so I guess what I just want to say is that I hope that this conversation or something in this conversation has sparked something in, in, in you guys, our viewers, or maybe even you, uh, Sierra, to, to get out there and to try something that benefits uh, someone or something, some other living thing, um, that isn't yourself, uh, because this is our only planet, and we have to stick together and try to make the best of it for future generations so that they can have all the things that we have. What a good, what a good final statement. I love that so much, and thank you so much for, for joining me and talking on World Wildlife Day about your passions, your social impact, 
initiative through the Miss America organization and just your life life passion really that's what it seems like it is I hope oh. that's what it is yes it <laughs> okay. is. thank you so much for having me this was wonderful. of course I'm so glad you were here it was good to see you and if anyone like I said wants to ask more questions follow Dakota or ask me questions and I can ask Dakota um I'm so happy you all were able to join us for World Wildlife Day happy World Wildlife Day guys <laughs>